All right, here's our next example. What we're going to try to do is uh, see if we can't graph this little guy here. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to test for symmetry. Now, as you can see, the top has an even uh, degree, and there's only one term, so therefore it's even. The bottom polynomial uh, is also even. So this time we actually have an even function. And what that tells us, we're going to have symmetry about the y axis. So that's going to be fantastic. It's going to allow us to find some points pretty easily. Uh, next what we're going to do is we're going to figure out uh, what our uh, nice little y-intercept is. So we're going to plug in 0 for x. When I do that, I will get 0 over negative 4, which would be 0. So it's going to cross at the origin. So that will not only be my x-intercept, but it will also be my y-intercept. And uh, yeah, what I'll do next is I'll set my numerator equal to 0. Uh, when I do that, of course, I already know that I will get 0. Okay, it will have a multiplicity of 2, so that's going to help us out just a little bit. And then now what we can go on and try to do is to figure out our vertical and horizontal asymptotes. So to find your vertical asymptotes, what you're going to do is set your denominator equal to 0 and solve. Since we have a degree of 2, we should notice that we're going to get two zeros. So we're going to say our vertical asymptotes are x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to positive 2. To find our horizontal asymptotes, it's going to be based on degree. So we look at the degrees of our numerator and the degrees of our denominator. Since they're the same, it's the fraction of the leading coefficients. So your horizontal asymptote will be y is equal to 3. So that's going to give us a pretty good start uh, in terms of our graphing. So let's see if we can't put it together. All right, so vertical asymptotes were at 2 and negative 2. So we're going to dash in our vertical asymptotes. Our graph should not cross your vertical asymptotes. Your horizontal asymptote, the graph can cross your horizontal asymptote, which is y is equal to 3. Uh, but if it does cross, it will cross only at the ends. Not, or no, it won't cross at the ends. It will only have the potential to cross in the middle. So kind of keep that in mind. So there are asymptotes. The only other point we have is this one right here, which is both your x and your y-intercept. It does have a multiplicity of 2, so kind of keep that in mind because that will help us out. Oh, let's see if I can't rewrite our function here. fx equal to 3x squared over x squared minus 4. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're just going to plug in some values. So once it'll help me, I'm going to plug in 1 and see what I get. When I plug in 1, I will get 3 over negative 3. So I get a negative 1. Now good news, like I said, symmetry will help us out a lot. So if 1 will give us negative 1, then negative 1 will also give us negative 1. What I need to do now, well, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just mess with this middle part of the graph. So as you can see, we have vertical asymptotes, and as we approach vertical asymptotes, our graph is either going to go to positive infinity or negative infinity. And hopefully you can see, as you go this way towards your asymptote, your graph's going down, so therefore that pattern should continue. As we approach this asymptote, as you can see, our graph's also going down. So the middle part of our graph will look kind of like that. And then what we're going to do is plug in something else. This is 2, so I'll try 3. See what I got when I plug in 3. When I do that, I will get 27 on top, and then on the bottom, 9 minus 4 is 5. So when I divide those two things, I'll get 5 and 2 fifths. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 2 fifths be somewhere there. Now, again, symmetry is going to help us out since we have y-axis symmetry. 1, 2, 3, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 2 fifths. So that point also has to exist. Now we're going to plug in some others, so I'll try just plugging in, I don't know, 3, 4, 5, let's try 6. When I plug in 6, uh, 36 times 3, whoa, big math there, 8, carry a 1, 108 maybe. And then my denominator, 36 minus uh, 4 is 32. Let's see if I can't figure out where this calculator is, tools, maybe. Oh, I want that. Calculator, there it is. So 108 divided by 30, what did I say, 2? So 
to 3.375. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3. Should be somewhere about there. So if I plugged in 6 and got that, then when I plug in negative 6, I get the same thing. So negative 4, negative 5, negative 6, somewhere about there. All right, now what we're going to try to do is figure out what happens when we approach the vertical asymptote and then also what happens when our graph gets really large, positive or negative wise. So hopefully you can see as you're approaching the asymptote, your graph's going to get larger and larger. So our graph's going to, I mean, yeah, get a positive infinity. As we're approaching from this side, it will also do the same. And I could have plugged in a couple more values to be a little bit more specific, but I think I know the idea of what's going on. And then hopefully you can see as your graph gets larger and larger and larger, you can get closer and closer to that vertical asymptote. You won't cross it, at least not at the ends you won't, but it'll look a little something like that. So there's the graph.